Hey guys, it's me and I'm back with another video teaching you how to deal more damage in Genshin Impact. These are my tips that I use to deal a little bit more than 33 damage. So I hope you find these tips helpful, let's get right into it. First of all, I'd like to start out with team compositions. So of course you're going to want to have more than just one person on the team. You get four starter characters when you arrive and you usually get into the gacha and you get a few more characters. If you only have the starter team, that is all right. You can just level up at least one character. Every good team has a main DPS, but that doesn't mean your whole team should have a bunch of main DPSs. So you're going to have one main damage dealer, which is what you're investing your resources into. For me, that is going to be clean. Your team usually has a bunch of supports that help reactions with Klee. I'll go on to that a little bit later, but I'm going to do some Vaporize, Swirl, and Overload. So, team members I'm choosing are Xingqiu, Jean, and Fischl. If you don't have these characters, oh, that is completely fine. You can get into the gacha. I might make a video on team comps later on free-to-play teams if you don't have Klee and Jean because they're five stars, and for free-to-play players, it's kind of hard to get. So this is the team comp I'm going with, but if you want to deal more damage, make the right team and the right decisions. Now to move on to our next tip. Here I am in the character menu for Klee. First of all, you need to change her weapon. You can't have a level one weapon, which is why you want to go with a weapon that best suits Klee. Now you don't also want to have something like Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers because this is a support type weapon and also the substat is HP percentage. And we don't need HP percentage for Klee because Klee isn't really a healer and doesn't really scale anything off of HP. Which is why you're going to want to have crit damage or crit rate if you are building a main DPS. So Twin Neferite works or if you have a support character you might want to run energy recharge or the best weapon you have. I tried building to an Ephorite, it is pretty good. So if you have this three star weapon and it's really accessible for everybody, I have so many copies of it, you can refine the weapon and make it a lot, a lot better. But for me, I have an R5 Dodo Coattails, which was free from an event. So you don't need to wish a lot just to get this specific weapon. But finding the right weapon that suits your character and suits your main DPS is your priority and you want to level this weapon up to the highest you possibly can, depending on your adventure rank. For new players, you might not really know what this screen is, and don't worry, that's okay, because when I was still a new player, I didn't really know what the screen was either. This is the artifact screen, where you can put up to five pieces from an artifact set onto your character to increase your damage, increase your healing, elemental reactions, and a ton more. Currently, I have no artifacts on Klee because I took them off for the damage showcase. Depending on which character you have, you're going to want to choose the artifacts accordingly. Now, you don't need to memorize every single character build. That is completely fine. Even I don't know every single character build. But if you look online, there are plenty of helpful ones for you. For your main DPS, you want to prioritize crit rate and crit damage. Those are your highest possibilities of dealing a great amount of damage. I have 21% crit damage, which isn't the best, but it is still a bit better than having no crit damage at all. And you want an equal ratio. So you want a one to two ratio or somewhere around that. 50% crit rate, 100% crit damage. Something along the lines of that. That is your best goal. For the hourglass, goblet, and the circlet, that varies a lot, and it is extremely, extremely hard to farm for them. So for your circlet, you want crit rate or crit damage. Those are your priorities. I have crit damage on two circlets with a crit rate substat, which rolled into HP a bunch of times. But this is the one that I use for Klee for her highest dealing damage. Make sure you level up your five star good artifacts to the highest level you can possibly get it, which is level 20 because every stat increases every time you level it up. Your support characters also want a good artifact set. 
for my Xing Cho, I have a Noblesse Oblige 4-piece set because running the Noblesse Oblige 4-piece on a support character is really, really, really good because you can spam your support character's bursts and get that constant attack percent bonus and it is amazing if you want to deal big numbers. Xing Cho runs an energy recharge sword which means you can spam his burst more often and deal even bigger numbers which is really 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 beneficial. Now it is time for the fun part which is elemental reactions. Genshin is really centered around elemental reactions and you need to make sure that you do the right ones. On screen, I have a chart right now of all the different types of elemental reactions in Genshin that you can make. But the best ones you want to aim for are Melt and Vaporize, which is when you apply either Cryo or Hydro onto a enemy, and you apply Pyro, which will either melt or vaporize. Here is a demonstration of Vaporize. <laughs> As you can see, Vaporize flashed on the screen and did an increased damage. Next up, a elemental reaction that I really like to do a lot is Overload, which is what sends enemies flying backward, which is great for crowd control if you want enemies in a certain location. You apply Electro and you apply Pyro, and there you go. You see Overload and the enemies fly backwards, dealing some damage. La, la, la. Depending on the artifacts that you put on your characters, you are going to want to use those reactions. For Klee, her artifact set bonus increases bringing an overload damage by 40%, so that means I will want to do a lot more overload with Klee, so that I can get that damage bonus. For elemental reactions that involve Animo or Wind, you will want to swirl every single time. Now. Animal characters require a different kind of build, which is why you want to run the 4-piece Viridescent set on all Animo supports, basically all of them. Viridescent 4-piece decreases the resistance that enemies have to the element that you're swirling with. For example, if I applied Electro onto this enemy and then swirled it with Electro, the enemy would have a decreased resistance to the element Electro if I ran the 4-piece Viridescent. More on artifact sets later, just remember to know your elemental reactions and which ones do the most amount of damage. You want to go for Vaporize and Melt to deal an increased crit damage. <laughs> the last and most important tip of all is your talents. If you have a main DPS, you are going to want to prioritize the normal attack talent because that is the attack you're using the most. For supports, you want your burst or elemental skill to be prioritized with your talents. By leveling up the talents in the right way, you can deal an increased damage. Here is a quick damage showcase without any food buffs on the Cryo Regis Vine. <laughs> tips helpful thank you so much for watching if you want to join the discord server links in the description thank you all everyone i appreciate all your support and i can't wait to see you in our next video for now see ya